Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. This video is sponsored by Motion VFX. The Logitech Combo Touch is a Logitech's take on a keyboard slash trackpad combo. It's similar to the Magic Keyboard for iPad Pro in that it has a keyboard, but it's made for Apple's other iPads, including the seventh generation iPad, the 10.5 inch iPad Pro, and the 10.5 inch iPad Air, which is what I'm using to test out this product. Logitech's keyboard is only $150, and I think the word only is fitting when you compare this product to Apple's Magic Keyboard that starts at $299 for the 11-inch version and $349 for the 12.9-inch. If Logitech could make a version of this keyboard slash trackpad combination for the iPad Pro and price it around $150 to $200 at max, it might be the best keyboard case with a trackpad out there. Let me tell you why. For starters, it's really well made, feels great to type on, and I'm just overall impressed with the build quality. It definitely has that Microsoft Surface look and feel to it. Unlike Apple's keyboard cases, where there's no protection for the edges, which a lot of people didn't really like, the Logitech offers full protection for the iPad except for the connector pin section since that's where the keyboard connects. When everything is all connected together, your iPad should be fully protected. The materials used to make this case feels great, and I really like the look of it. There's a spot for your Apple Pencil, and the case portion has a kickstand that offers 40 degrees of adjustment so that it can be set to different angles depending on what you're doing. There's a lot of flexibility. The kickstand is also the most obvious Microsoft Surface design element, but it totally works in this case. The most important part of this product is obviously the keyboard and trackpad, and I'm happy to report that it's like 90% perfect. There are a few minor issues on my end, and it could just be my specific unit that I have here, but I have come across a few bugs. I'll start by saying this trackpad is great. It's a little firm to click, and not every part of the trackpad can be clicked, but really it's kind of just the top strip of the trackpad that won't click in when you press it. The sides and bottoms work just fine. I'm a tap to click fan anyways, and so you can actually turn that on in the settings menu, and it makes the experience perfect for me. The most important part is that this trackpad features pretty much all of the same gestures and the feel that you get when you connect something like a Magic Trackpad 2 to your iPad. It works perfectly. As much as I loved the design and feel of the trackpad on the Bridge Pro Plus, it was not a great trackpad experience with iPad OS. This is infinitely better. So you can three finger swipe left and right to switch between full screen applications, three finger swipe up to go home or launch the app switcher, etc. It all works and it works really well. Scrolling is a great experience too. I don't have that weird lag effect where it keeps scrolling past the page at the top or at the bottom or it just scrolls too far. It works as it normally should. The keyboard, on the other hand, is probably where most of the issues lie for me, and I really love the feel of this keyboard, so I wanted to start that off by saying that, because that should tell you how relatively minor these other issues are. So let's touch on those shortcomings really quick. My first gripe is not Logitech's fault, because if it would have made this keyboard larger than the surface area of the iPad, it would look and feel weird, but I just feel like things are a little cramped when typing, especially near the bottom. Again, it's not major, but things are a bit tight. My other issue so far is that some keys just don't work. And you might be thinking, that seems like a huge deal, and it is, but this could just be my unit, and the keys that don't work are not ones that I use regularly. It is frustrating, but workable. The first key that didn't work for me over the weekend was the dollar symbol, but then a day later it works fine. Keep in mind, if I press 4, that works fine, but if I press shift 4 for the dollar sign, it doesn't work. Now, it's the apostrophe key at this moment in time, which only affects the actual apostrophe character, not quotation as if I was to hold down shift. I was able to capture a video of it so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here, and a firmware update might fix this in the future, but I just want to let you know that's kind of what I'm dealing with. Other than that, this keyboard is a joy to type on. The keys feel great with a solid amount of key travel, and it does feature backlit keys, which you can toggle its brightness using those specific keys located alongside other function keys like going back to your home screen, screen brightness, search, media, and volume controls, as well as locking your iPad. 
The last thing I do want to touch on is lapability, that word we all know and love and we use to describe how well each keyboard case works on your lap. Most of them are not great, and the combo touch falls towards that trend. It's not the worst typing experience on your lap. In fact, most of my issues with other keyboard cases is how hard it is to physically type with it on your lap. With the combo touch, it's actually pretty easy to type, but the harder you press on the keys, the more the screen kind of wobbles up and down because this kickstand's not the greatest when it's on your lap. It really needs kind of just a hard flat surface. So that could get really annoying and it's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about using this of the majority of the time on your lap. To wrap it up, I'm really impressed. Love the kickstand design and how useful it is to be able to adjust the various degrees in which your iPad sits both with or without the keyboard. I'm impressed with the trackpad too, it's very solid. It's definitely worth the $150 price tag in my opinion, and if you're an iPad 7th gen, 10.5 inch iPad Pro, or 3rd generation iPad Air user who's feeling left out with all of the people talking about their new magic keyboard that's coming from Apple later this week, this combo touch from Logitech seems like a fantastic alternative. Of course, I would love to know what you think, what are your thoughts, have you pre-ordered one of these yet, or are you just kind of waiting to see what it's like? go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. If I didn't answer a question or miss something in this video, don't worry, just let me know in those comments and I will try to answer all of your questions. Also, before we end today's video, I do want to give you more information about today's sponsor, Motion VFX. If you haven't heard of Motion VFX yet and you're a content creator, well, buckle up because your life is about to get a whole lot easier. You might have seen some fancy animations or graphics popping up throughout most of our videos, and as much as I would like to say I've created those beautiful transitions or animations myself, well, technically I did not. Work smarter, not harder, with over hundreds of different plugins and templates from Motion VFX. They are hands down the best resource for Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion plugins and templates. Installing a plugin is as easy as one click from the Motion VFX menu bar app, and customizing the plugins all takes place directly inside of Final Cut Pro. Just drag and drop your effect into your timeline and edit from the inspector. It's that easy. If you're looking for a recommendation on what plugins to check out, definitely start with the M bundle vlogger. These are the perfect set of resources for adding in some awesome intros, pop tags, social media animations, adding in pointers for tutorials, something that I do quite a bit, and much, much more. Honestly, I use these plugins every day, and they are a huge tool for helping me create content faster and easier. For more information about Motion VFX and the M Bundle Vlogger, click the link in the description down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.